When shooting multiple images of the same subject matter, it's better to shoot them all at the same exposure. Bracketing the exposure to make sure you get some of them correct might leave you with an image with the best pose and expression and the worst possible exposure. By shooting the exposures the same, you can use Photoshop's actions and batch processing to do all the global corrections to one file and then apply the corrections to all the additional images. I've got a folder of images called Original Beach Portrait, which has six images, but it could be as 600 images. So what we want to do is correct one image and then apply all these corrections back to the rest of the photographs. I've created a blank folder on the desktop called Retouched Beach Portraits for where they can go after they're processed, and another blank folder for the web gallery, which is where we'll put the proofing gallery for them to pick their final image. We can see by going into the metadata that Photoshop has included all the information from the camera, including the time, the date, the lens. Everything important about photographing this image is in the metadata, so we can always refer to that later if we need to. Let's go ahead and click on an image and open it up. We can see by looking at the histogram that a lot of the top end of the information is missing. What we need to do now is globally open up the image without adding too much more contrast. If we just did a levels command, command L, control L in the PC and brought up our levels dialog box and we tried to even out the histogram, we're adding a lot more contrast to the overall image. I want to actually go ahead and open up the image as if we turn the f-stop to a wider aperture. The meter was thrown off by the original exposure. This gray sky and white shirts are throwing the meter off, making everything go to a neutral gray and this making the image much darker than it needs to be. Let's go ahead and add a couple of reference points so we can watch the numbers. I'm going to go to my info palette and now I'm going to go to the color picker and choose the color sampler tool. Now when I click on a dark area and then a lighter area we can see we've added two more dialog boxes to the info palette each for these two samplers. We can watch these numbers and see where they go as we make these corrections. Right now we're seeing the shadow areas are 3, 7, and 8, which means we're averaging around 5 or 6 for the shadow information. And the highlight information is 145 to 167, meaning we're definitely much lower than we need to be on our highlight detail. Let's add a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to hold the option key down while they click on the new adjustment layer and go to curves. We have the Curves New Layer dialog box open. I can change this from Normal to Screen Blend Mode. This is going to brighten up the image as if we opened up the f-stop. I'm going to hit OK. And without having making any changes to the line in the Screen dialog box, I'm just going to say OK. And we can look at this image. I can turn it on and off and see how this is really, really brightening up the image. OK. But we want to do this as a batch processing, but so before we actually do that, let's go ahead and start a new action so that when we apply this, it'll be recorded and we can apply this back to the rest of the shots. I'll go to the Actions dialog box and I'll go New Action. Action number one, hit Record button. We can see the red light come on at the bottom of the Actions palette letting us know that we are in the record mode and every step we make right now will be recorded. Let's go ahead again, holding the Option key, Alt on the PC, I'll go to Curves. I'll change it from Mode Normal to Screen. Hit OK. If we wanted to kick it up a little bit at this point, we could. I'm going to just make a slight adjustment here. Hit OK. We can see in these numbers that we're now in the high 220s, but their shadow area is still pretty low. I think we've got the highlight area where we want it to be, so I'm going to go ahead and merge this image down. Command E, Control E on the PC will merge that adjustment layer back down into the background. Now I want to go ahead and open up the shadow information. Let's go ahead and go under the menu, Image, Adjustments. Let's try the shadow highlight adjustment. As I move the slider up on the shadows, we're adding a shadow brightening curve to the image opening up the shadow information without doing too much more work to the highlight information. I'll keep the tonal width down, the radius around 30 to 40, and now I can also add a little more saturation back into the image, and I can adjust the midtone contrast up or down a little bit to taste, in this case I'll go up a little bit, and hit OK. Now we've gone ahead and opened up the shadows. We're reading a lot more information. Now we're reading in the middle 20s or so for the shadow information, which will give us good detail for the final image. I'm going to go ahead and stop the action. 
I don't want to save the file. I just want to save the action because I don't want to process this file twice through the batch processing. So I'll go ahead and close this image off and don't save. Now that we have this action, I'll go ahead and make sure that it's highlighted in the actions palette. I'm going to do a command A, control A in the PC to select all the images in the file browser. I'll go under the file browser menu and go to automate batch. Now we can see here the action one is already picked because that's what I had selected in the action palette where the source is images from the file browser. We want to decide that we want to go to a new folder. What we really don't ever want to do is save and close because you don't want to override the original pictures. You always want to save those. So let's go to a new folder. We'll choose the folder and we'll call it the retouched portraits on the desktop. Now I also want to go ahead and name the files. We're going to go ahead and name them as the Smith family. We got a two digit serial number set in and the extension so that as the files go through it'll rename them Smith family 010203 as it goes through the images. That way we're doing two things at once. We're correcting the images and getting them renamed to start with so that they have a reference image to pick from by name when they go to the web gallery. I'll go ahead and hit OK. The images are open, corrected, and resaved to the new folder. If I click on the new folder we can see these images are now all corrected across the board and they're all corrected the same way. The next step is we want to go ahead and let the clients view these images so we're going to create a web gallery. I'll do a command A again, select all the images, go automate photo web gallery. In the dialog box we have the images are coming from the file browser. The destination is going to be the web gallery portraits on the desktop. Under uh, general we're going to go now to banner. The banner will go ahead and decide the site name will be Smith Family and we'll leave the fonts and the date all set there. We'll go to large images. Now here we can choose how big the images when we click on them how big they're going to be. In this case let's go ahead and we'll go to large images at 450 pixels. Uh, we'll leave the JPEG quality high. It'll use the file name for the title. Let's go to thumbnails. We have it set for three images across by three images down. We'll set the pixel size to 200. This would say if there are more than nine images it would go to a new page. That way if somebody's viewing these on a modem with their internet it's not going to take too much time to load a page. Let's now go to security. We can go ahead and put a custom text in here. We'll say, uh, say we want to have a copyright symbol studio name and date would go here. So we put that in here and we can choose what color. Obviously I think we're going to go ahead and choose white and hit OK. I'm going to leave it at 50% opacity and we can choose whether it's center, top left. I'm going to go ahead and leave it bottom left for the image. Once that's set we'll go ahead and hit the OK button. Each image will be opened up. The date, name and everything will be put in there and it'll automatically open up in a file browser, whatever the default file browser of the computer is. We can see the images. These are the thumbnail images. As they click on one image, we can see we have the studio name and date already put at the bottom and we can actually cycle through the images and the clients have the name of the file so they can pick the exact file they want to do the final retouching and by having this information in the file they can't use this and sort of steal the images. We want to make sure that we have something in here to protect the photographer. This is a very good way to give the clients the photographs. You can burn these onto a CD or you could post it online and let them choose. Either way it makes it very convenient for the clients to pick their final images.